Wall Street Journal, the FBI hit a mole in the Trump campaign by Tyler Durden for ZeroHedge.com. On Wednesday, we reported on an intense battle playing out between House Intel Committee Chairman Devin Nunez, the Department of Justice, and the Mueller investigation concerning a cache of intelligence that uh, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein refused to hand over. Uh, a request he equated to extortion. On Tuesday, the Washington Post reported that Nunez has de was denied access to the information on the grounds that it would risk lives by potentially exposing the source, a U.S. citizen who has provided intelligence to the CIA and FBI. After the White House caved to Rosenstein and Nunez, was uh, barred from seeing the documents, it also emerged that this same intelligence had already been shared with special counsel Robert Mueller as part of his investigation into alleged Russian involvement in the 2016 U.S. election. On Wednesday afternoon, however, news emerged that Nunez and House Oversight and Government Reform Committee Chairman Trey Gowdy would receive a classified Thursday briefing at the DOJ on the documents. This is, to put it lightly, incredibly significant. Why? Because it appears that the FBI may have had a mole embedded in the Trump campaign. There's a shocker for you, right? In a bombshell op-ed in the Wall Street Journal, Kim, uh, Kimberly Strassel shares a few key insights about recent developments. Perhaps uh, we should start with the, the ending and let uh, you take it from there. Needless to say, Strassel's claims, if true, would have wide-ranging impl implications for the CIA, FBI, and DOJ, and former Obama administration officials. Strassel concludes, I believe I know the name of the informant, but my intelligence sources did not provide it to me and refused to confirm it. It would therefore be irresponsible to publish it. Well, I agree with that. Um, authored by, yeah, about that FBI source. Did the Bureau engage in outright spying against the Trump, uh, the 2016 Trump campaign? The Department of Justice lost its latest battle with Congress Thursday when it allowed House Intelligence Committee members to view classified documents about a top-secret intelligence source that was part of the FBI's investigation of the Trump campaign. Even without official confirmation of that source's name, the news so far holds some stunning implications. Among them is that the Justice Department and the Federal Bureau of Investigation outright hid critical information from a congressional investigation. In a Thursday press conference, Speaker Paul Ryan bluntly noted that the Intelligence Chairman Devin Nunez's request for details on this secret source was wholly appropriate, completely within the scope of the committee's long-running FBI investigation and something that probably should have been answered a while ago. Translation, the department knew full well it should have turned this material over to congressional investigators last year, but instead deliberately concealed it. House investigators nonetheless sniffed out a name. And Mr. Nunez, in recent weeks, issued a letter and a subpoena demanding more details. Deputy Attorney General uh, Rod Rosenstein's response was uh, to double down, accusing the House of extortion and delivering a speech in which he claimed that declining to open the FBI's file to review is a constitutional duty. Justice asked the White House to back at Stonewall. And it even uh, began spinning that daddy of all super uh, spook arguments that revealing any detail about this particular asset could result in loss of human lives. Yeah, right. This is desperation, and it strongly suggests that whatever is in these files is going to prove very uncomfortable to the FBI. Uncomfortable, I would say that would be the least. 
the Bureau already has some uh, explaining to do, thanks to the Washington Post unnamed law enforcement uh, leakers. Law enforcement leakers, we know Mr. Nunez's requests deal with a uh, top secret intelligence source of the FBI and CIA, who is a U.S. citizen and who was involved in the Russian collusion probe. When government agencies uh, refer to sources, they mean people who appear to be average citizens, but use their profession or contacts to spy for the agency. Ergo, we might uh, take this to mean that the FBI secretly had a person on the payroll who used his or her non-FBI credentials to interact in some capacity with the Trump campaign. This would amount to spying, and it is hugely disconcerting. It would also be a major escalation from the electronic surveillance we already knew about, which was bad enough. Obama political appointees rampantly unmasked Trump campaign officials to monitor their, monitor their conversations, while the FBI played dirty with its surveillance water, warrant against Carter Page, failing to tell the uh, FISA court that its supporting information uh, came from Hillary Clinton campaign, and I would say just Hillary Clinton. Now, we find it may have also been rolling out human intelligence, John LeCar style, to infiltrate the Trump campaign. Uh, which would lead to another big question for the FBI. When the Bureau has been uh, doggedly sticking uh, with its story that a tip in July of 2016 about the drunken ramblings of George Papadopoulos launched its counterintelligence probe, still the players in this affair, the FBI former director James Comey, the Steele dossier authors have been suspiciously vague, on the key moments leading up to that launch date. When precisely was the Steele dossier delivered to the FBI? When precisely did the Papadopoulos information come from? Uh, and to the point, when precisely was this human source operating? Uh, because if it was prior to that infamous Papadopoulos tip, then the FBI isn't being straight. It would mean the Bureau was spying on the Trump campaign prior to that moment, and that in turn would mean that the FBI had been spurred to act on the basis of something other than a junior campaign aide's loose lips. We also know that among the Justice Department's stated reasons for not complying with the Nunez subpoena was its worry that to do so might damage international relationships. This suggests the source, maybe overseas, have ties to foreign intelligence or both. That's notable given the highly suspicious role foreigners have played in this escapade. It was an Australian diplomat who reported the Papadopoulos conversation Dossier author Christopher Steele is British, used to work for MI6, and retains ties to that spy agency as well as to a network of former spooks. It was a former Brit uh, British diplomat who tipped off Senator John McCain to the dossier. How this top secret uh, source fits into the puzzle could matter deeply. I believe I know the name of the informant, but my intelligence sources did not provide it to me and refused to confirm it. It would therefore be irresponsible to publish it. But what is clear is that we've ba uh, barely scratched the surface of the FBI's 2016 behavior, and the country will never get the straight story until President Trump moves to declassify everything possible, and it's time to rip the band-aid off. So Rosenstein's uh, screaming its extortion when in by law uh, Congress has the authority to look into this. He has no right to withhold this information. But again, the thing is they're, they're thinking it's somebody uh, overseas. No, I'm thinking it's got to be Clapper or Brennan. I just, you know, I mean, I may be wrong, but I know they had a 
big hand in this, even if it wasn't them per se. It's Clapper and Brennan. Those two, those two are the real, and Brennan is the worst one. Brennan is real bad. Uh, uh, Brennan, I, I can, I can, I can, you know, just feel that it's Brennan somehow, mostly, unbelievable. Uh, but Carter Page was a plant already from the FBI, so uh, I don't understand that. Carter Page was was uh, uh, put into the Trump campaign, and they started the FISA uh, um, warrant on Carter Page first. Uh, so. Why wouldn't it be Carter Page? That's what I don't understand because Carter Page was a plant from the FBI because he worked for the uh, he worked for Bill Clinton in the 90s and he worked for the FBI and they honored him with something and then he left. I don't even remember, but that's what took place. So uh, basically that's the bottom line. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and again, thank you so much for watching.